Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 10th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. We had a really good day of birding today with some mega rarities and some first of years, so stay tuned. But first, I'd like to say that the Lycobirds YouTube channel recently hit 1 million total views for all of our content, so thank you so much to everyone who watches our content. It feels like a big milestone for us. And also, there was a reporter from Channel 8 WROC who stopped out at the platform today and interviewed me about the Hawkwatch and the turkey vulture migration, so keep an eye out for that. Kim and I started out the day at the Braddock Bay East Spit under some ominous skies. Walking out the path, I had my first of season yellow-bellied sapsucker, but I was about half a second too late on the photo. We spent most of the time on the sand bridge between the East Spit and the Barrier Island, and there were a lot of ducks in the water, so we didn't want to go to the tip of the East Spit or onto the island and flush everything. Here we have a duck that has a white crescent on the front of the face. This is a male blue-winged teal. Here we have two ducks that are related and together look a little bit Christmassy. On the left, we see a duck that has a white forehead stripe and some green to the head brown sides and back, and then white and black at the rear of the bird. The bird on the right is somewhat similar in that it has a white forehead stripe, but instead of green on the head, it has a completely red head. And instead of the brown on the sides and back, it has gray on the sides and back. The bird on the left is the expected American widgeon, and the bird on the right is the rare Eurasian widgeon. And when we got out there and saw how close all of the ducks were, we jokingly said, wouldn't it be amazing if the Eurasian widgeon was in here? And we were scanning the lake for a few minutes and turned back around, and there it was. And the photo's a little grainy because the light wasn't great, but through a spotting scope, this bird was totally stunning. Here's a bird that we identified by call. We asked it if it was an American crow, and it said, uh-uh. So this is a fish crow. Here we have a bird that was sitting on the lake. We see that it has a dark gray back, and that continues up the back of the neck onto the head, and the front of the neck and face are white, and we see a thick bill. So this is a common loon, and I've posted some photos recently of the breeding plumage common loons, which are a little more stunning looking with the black heads. This is the non-breeding plumage and juvenile type plumage. Here we have a large white wading bird with a long yellow bill and long trailing legs. This is a great egret. Here we have a raptor with a long tail and long wings that have somewhat pointed tips. Overall, the bird is white underneath with a grayish head, black wingtips, and a black trailing edge to the secondaries. This is an adult male northern harrier, also known as a gray ghost. From the east spit, we had a total of 55 species today. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park to start the Hawk Watch, and it started out overcast, and it was actually fairly warm with light southerly winds. After about two hours, there was some rain that moved through that was associated with a cold front, and ahead of that rain, we had a nice big push of turkey vultures and other migrants. That rain shut the flight down for about 45 minutes, and then we came back out to the platform, and the sun started to come out a little bit, and it launched a huge flight for a few hours. We had thousands of turkey vultures and really high numbers of other raptors as well. Really a spectacular flight and a little bit unexpected on the less favorable west-northwest winds. Here we have a large black water bird. We see a long neck with a yellowish face and we see a somewhat long tail. This is a double-crested cormorant. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross. We see a long tail and long rounded wings. We see orange barring underneath, which indicates that it's an adult of either sharp-shinned hawk or cooper's hawk. To tell them apart, we look at the posture. We see that it's holding its wings out very straight. The bird had a large head, although from the angle of the photo, the head looks a little bit smaller than it did when it turned a little bit more. And judging by the tail, it's a little bit hard to tell, but we can see that the outer tail feathers seem a bit shorter than the central ones, giving the tail a slightly rounded appearance. Those field marks combined make this an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have a somewhat large woodpecker perched in a tree. We see some spotting underneath and a black bib. We see some yellowish tail feathers. And we see a black mustache on the face indicating that this is a male northern flicker. Here's a somewhat drab flycatcher with a dark gray head and back, white to the front, and a small black bill. This is an eastern Phoebe. Here we have a dark stripy bird with a pointed bill. This is a female type red-winged blackbird. 
And in my videos, you'll sometimes hear me say female type. And when I say that, it's usually because the juveniles of the species look similar to the females, and I'm not sure which it is. Here's a group of ducks, and they all seem to be the same size and have a really large bill to them, so we can assume they're all the same species. We see a couple males here with green heads and the chestnut color underneath with some white in between. The females are more brownish overall, but that bill is unmistakable. These are northern shovelers. Even though the skies were pretty gloomy ahead of the rain of the approaching cold front, we had a pretty good push of turkey vultures come through. Here's some turkey vultures gliding and flapping, and we had about 300 in that push before the rain. Here we have a hawk that if we were to compare this to the shape of a red-tailed hawk, we'd say that this hawk has a longer tail. The wings look a little bit longer and skinnier, maybe a little bit more pointed at the tips. Overall, the bird's not quite as bulky, but this is another Budio. And if we look at the plumage, we see dark squares in the carpal region. We also see there's a bit of a bib to the upper breast, then a little bit of white, and then more dark down here on the belly. And this is actually the adult male plumage of the light morph rough-legged hawk. After sheltering in the car during the rain, we made our way back out to the platform and had this bird sitting up nicely in a tree for us. We see a lot of bright yellow to the front and we can make out a little bit of a black bib. Overall, the back is more camouflage patterned. We see a flat head to a very sharp long bill. This is an eastern meadowlark. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long rounded wings. We should be thinking excipiter. And looking at this bird, we see a very small head, a little bit more compact shape with rounded looking wings. This is a sharp shinned hawk. Today was the first really big day of the season for sharp shinned hawks with nearly 300. Here we have a hawk with that classic Budio shape, kind of a bulky bird overall with broad wings and a medium length tail. We see dark patagial bars and a dark belly band, letting us know that this is a red-tailed hawk. And we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail, indicating that it's an adult. Here we have a small raptor that's light underneath with very pointed wings. So a small, light falcon is an American kestrel. And this is the females that have this vertical brown streaking to the breast. Here we have a hawk in a glide posture. It doesn't have that flying cross shape of the occipiters. Rather, this is a budio. What do we see? Well, we see some horizontal brown barring on the underside of the body. We see a very straight trailing edge to the wings in this glide posture. And if we look at the tail, it looks dark with a single wide white band. This is the first broad winged hawk of the season, an adult. And it's typical that the adults migrate first because they want to get up on the nesting grounds. And like I said, it was the first one, but it certainly won't be the last one. This is one of our most numerous migrants. And over the next few weeks on the right days, we can see thousands of them or even tens of thousands of them on a good day. Here we have two large grayish tan birds, although in the sunlight they were shining more silvery. We see long trailing legs and long necks with a red cap. These are sandhill cranes, and we had around seven sandhill cranes total today. And as the sun started to come out, it launched a huge turkey vulture flight. Over the course of a couple hours, we had a few thousand of them. In one hour, we had over a thousand of them. And at one point, you would just scan from the flocks that were gliding by all the way back to the horizon and across, and it was just endless kettles of circling turkey vultures and I was doing my best busy counting them as well as many other species going by, but Kim took the opportunity to get some nice cell phone videos. We had over 2,700 total turkey vultures today, and the season total is up around 18,000 so far. Here we have a Budio in a glide posture. We see that the streaking starts all the way on the upper breast and extends down. Not quite as big and bulky as a red-tailed hawk with a slightly longer tail as well and no dark patagial bars. We also see translucent crescents here a little bit near the wingtips. This is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a hawk that's mostly light underneath. We do see a brown head as well as dark patagial bars and a belly band. This is a red-tailed hawk. Now compare that to this bird. Overall, it's a somewhat similar shape, so we should be thinking that it's also in the Budio genus. But we not only see a dark head, but a completely dark underside, and also the underside of the wings, including the flight feather, all look fairly dark. 
maybe a little bit lighter here in the covered feathers. It's hard to tell from the photo and from the lighting, but we look at the shape of the wing. It's a longer wing that's a little bit more pointed. So when I saw the silhouette of this bird, I immediately knew that it was something different and something good. Me and Kim were the only ones on the platform to see this bird, and I immediately yelled out, is that a Swainson's hawk? And yes, this is a dark morph Swainson's hawk. Swainson's hawk is a raptor found in the western United States, but we do occasionally get them as a vagrant through the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And they come in two different color morphs, light morphs and dark morphs. And this is the first dark one that I've ever seen. I've seen a handful at different Hawk Watches down in Delaware. I've seen one or two up here in New York. I've seen a couple, um, but to get a dark one like this was really special. So great bird to see. And it's something that's never guaranteed in a given season. So we were really happy to see this Swainson's Hawk today. And then the down flap, just notice how pointed these wingtips get. You'll never see that kind of pointed wingtip on a red-tailed hawk. Here we have a large dark raptor with a big head and bill, some splotchy white underneath, especially in the wing pit area. This is an immature bald eagle. And this looks like one that was born last year that's just starting to molt some of its inner primary feathers. And with as good as the flight was today, I was surprised we didn't see more bald eagles, but here we have an adult. Here's another hawk that you should be able to identify. We see dark patagio bars and a dark belly band, making this a red-tailed hawk. And the dark trailing edge to the wings and red tail make it an adult. Compare that to this bird, which doesn't look quite as bulky and has a longer tail. We see translucent crescents near the wingtips and some vertical streaking on the breast, making this a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. How would you describe the shape of this bird? How about a flying cross? We see a hawk with a really long tail and long wings. We see a big head on this bird and a rounded tip to the tail, as well as some vertical teardrop streaking, mainly concentrated on the upper breast. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have a large, lanky, black and white raptor. This is an osprey. Here we have a raptor with a long tail, long wings that are somewhat pointed, and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier. We see that it has very little streaking to the underside or the patagio area that makes this a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have a hawk that compared to a red tail is a little bit more slender with longer skinnier wings, maybe a slightly longer tail. Overall the plumage is very black and white. We see black squares here in the carpal region. We also see a lot of black here on the belly. And we don't see much of a dark trailing edge to the wings and sort of a diffuse tip to the tail. This is a juvenile light morph rough-legged hawk. Here we have a raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking falcon. It was very small and light colored underneath. This is a female American kestrel. And here's another American kestrel that was hover hunting in the field next to us. We see that the upper surface of the wings is blue and black and the back of the bird was orange, making this a male American kestrel. Taking a look at the eBird report from the Hawk Watch, today we had 67 species. I picked up three new species for the season today, which were yellow-bellied sapsucker, broad-winged hawk, and Swainson's hawk. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 2,767 turkey vultures, one osprey, 10 bald eagles, 58 northern harriers, for excipiters, we had 279 sharpies and 6 coops. For budios, we had 38 red-shouldered hawks, 1 broad-winged hawk, 113 red-tailed hawks, 2 rough-legged hawks, and down at the bottom, 1 Swainson's hawk. And for falcons, we had 46 American kestrels for a grand total of 3,322 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 12,205 and the season total to 20,325. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for a steady rain in the morning, then showers continuing into the afternoon, warmer temperatures up around 70, and winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. I think it's hard to predict what will happen. Southeasterly winds can be good because it's a southerly wind that can encourage migration. However, the rain will work to prevent a raptor flight, especially early in the morning. Now, as there's light rain later on or periods of no rain, 
This time of the season, there could be sharp-shinned hawks and kestrels and northern harriers that want to push through. Also, that southeasterly wind direction is a direct headwind, which sometimes keeps the raptors low. So sometimes these are the days that we end up getting the closest and best looks at migrating raptors. But it's hard to say without getting out there. It could be a really good day with close looks, or it might end up being a complete dud. We won't know until we get out there. For Friday, they're calling for rain showers early and then remaining overcast and windy, high up around 60 and southwest winds at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So it's a good wind direction. It's maybe slightly stronger than we would like it. Those stronger winds push us around a little bit and sometimes push the raptors out more towards the lake rather than overhead. But it's a good wind direction. And even though it's looking like a gloomy day, when the winds are that strong, it gets the raptors moving regardless, so I'm optimistic that we'll get a good flight for Friday, but we'll check the forecast again tomorrow. And for Saturday, it's looking cloudy and windy with periods of light rain early, high in the low 50s, and strong westerly winds at 25 to 35 miles per hour. There will probably be some activity, but that's a pretty strong wind, and we'll probably end up sheltering behind the platform, so we're not getting knocked around by that wind so much. Um, a little bit too strong to really get a huge flight in my opinion and it's only a westerly wind there's no southerly component to it so we'll keep an eye on it as we get closer but uh, not looking great for saturday all right well today ended up being a pretty crazy day getting out in the morning and getting those great looks at the eurasian widgeon getting over to the hawk watch and having that big initial push before the rain getting to lounge in the car for a bit and then getting back out for that huge flight that picked up as the sun popped out after the cold front passed and getting the Swainson's Hawk and the first broadwing of the season and then having a news reporter show up and interview me in the afternoon. Lots of things happening today and hopefully there will be lots of things happening when you visit us soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.